I'm VCDX number 74 and the CEO of Roomcast and one of the co-founders. And I'm joined here by Robert Bergner, who is our product owner. Hello, um, I'm Robert Bergner. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I'm the product owner in Roomcast. All right, so today we are going to be talking about BSI IT Grundschutz and how to automate it uh, with Roomcast Analyzer version 3.1. Uh, and uh, by the way, this webinar is recorded, uh, so um, we are going to distribute the recording later on if you want to distribute it to your colleagues or peers. Uh, and also at any time, feel free to ask any questions uh, in the chat uh, or the Q&A section and we'll be answering as we go along with the webinar. All right, so I'm going to start uh, first with covering a little bit about what is Roomcast Analyzer. And when I saw the registrants list, I see that many of you already are familiar with Roomcast. So I'm going to be very brief. Uh, but for those of you that uh, never worked with Roomcast or even never heard of it, uh, I will just uh, spend a couple of minutes on that. And I will also demo some of the new features that came with uh, Roomcast Analyzer version three. So once we finish with that introduction, we will start talking about BSI and how Roomcast helps with that. Okay, first of all, what is Roomcast Analyzer? Well, it's a software product that runs on premises and helps you discover potential risks in your VMware infrastructure, in the configuration and the logs. The way that Roomcast does that is quite unique. We took many different sources of knowledge, the VMware knowledge base, best practices, white papers, security hardening guides, compliance profiles, and the hardware compatibility list. So we compiled all that and parsed it into machine readable rules uh, so that your infrastructure is continuously audited against those sources of knowledge. Uh, so you can discover proactively any problems or security incompliances before they cause some major problem. Uh, Roomcast Analyzer is deployed as one gig OVA virtual appliance, which is already pre-installed, pre-configured. You just need to set up the IP address connected to your VMware infrastructure, to your vCenters, NSX managers, Horizon connection servers. It also analyzes vSAN automatically if you have vSAN. Uh, and you can uh, already see the initial results in a couple of minutes. When it comes to updates, there are new uh, issues or new uh, updates of the sources of information that are posted uh, continuously. That's why uh, usually once in two weeks we are releasing updates so that your appliance can update itself with the latest issue definitions on a regular basis, uh, which can happen with an online update, if you're able to connect Roomcast Analyzer to the internet uh, via proxy, or if it's in a dark site or a very secure location, you can also use the offline update option. So you can download an update file from our website, attach it to the virtual machine of Roomcast Analyzer and perform the update this way. So this is a very quick intro of Runcast Analyzer, and uh, I'm just going to show you also what is new in Runcast Analyzer 3 and especially 3.1. Uh, but first, uh, let me switch to the demo. Um, and uh, just a second, so we, we're going to go to our demo environment because the best way is really to show you in reality how things look like. First of all, for those that have not seen Runcast Analyzer, once you log in, uh, once you deploy the appliance and you log in, you configure it uh, with connection to your vCenters. This is the main dashboard that you're going to see. And here you'll see how many uh, critical, major, and medium issues were detected, how many issues were found in the logs, in the configuration, level of security compliance, and level of best practice adoption. The history of at least 365 days of configuration scans is kept in with all the details. So you can go back in time, see what changed in the configuration, uh, what kind of new issues appeared or old ones uh, have been solved. Um, and you can dive into, if you wish, uh, for example, uh, compute uh, configuration issues. Uh, it will show you always a table of uh, the potential problems that are detected. For example, purple screen of death, uh, the affected objects, in this case, hosts and virtual machines. So you can view all that in the product interface, but you can also use the web client plugin. So as uh, many of you know that uh, uh, used Roomcast Analyzer before, we developed and have been maintaining the plugin for your vCenter web client, which pretty much brings the information about the results from the Roomcast Analyzer analysis directly in 
uh, your web client. So any object that you click on in your inventory on the left-hand side, uh, you are able to see uh, all the issues associated with that object that were detected by Runcast Analyzer. And one of the new things that we introduced with version 3 of Runcast Analyzer is this new widget. Uh, and uh, in, in this new widget, you have combined information with best practices, security hardening guides or security compliance standards and knowledge base issues. Uh, and you can actually click on each one of those. Uh, they're interactive. It will bring you specifically to the page of, in this case, knowledge base articles that were detected for that particular host. Uh, and this is situated under the monitor tab. So under the monitor tab, you will see this new section called Runcast Analyzer. And underneath, you will see best practices, security hardening guides, and knowledge base. And you have all the details for the affected objects here as well. Uh, so this is the new and refreshed look of the plugin. And another cool thing about the plugin is that now it supports also the dark theme. So we can switch the theme here. And uh, underneath, you're able to see that everything looks pretty good. Uh, this is the widget uh, that shows all the information for that particular object uh, uh, regarding the issues. OK, switching back to the Runcast Analyzer interface, and the plugin is one of the new things that uh, we refreshed or improved with version 3. Uh, but one thing that we've been working on for a very long time is the hardware compatibility list analysis. So with the HCL analysis, you're able to see continuously whether your host, IO devices, and all the other drivers, firmware, and BIOS levels are uh, in the HCL, in the hardware compatibility list by VMware. Uh, this is usually uh, taking a long time to do it manually. Uh, and uh, that's why uh, Runcast Analyzer saves really a lot of time and helps you discover all these uh, in advance. Uh, so like in this case, we have something red for that particular ESXi host, uh, which means the uh, if we dive into it, the BIOS level is uh, not compatible for that specific uh, physical server model and ESXi release. And if we go to IO devices, we have something red here as well. Uh, we see that the driver and firmware combination is not compatible for this ESXi release and for this uh, particular uh, IO device model. And by the way, for each one of those, we have provided also direct links to the page from the VMware HCL. So if you click on it, in this particular case for the IO device, I will be able to see the exact information from the source about this IO device. Yeah, this is the HCL page. Another new thing that we introduced with version 3, so the HCL was there for a few months, but it was in beta with version 3.0. After we collected uh, a lot of data from customers that were willing to share, uh, we tuned our algorithms in order to improve the accuracy of the HCL report. But another new thing that we introduced is the vSAN HCL analysis. Uh, and that's what I wanted to show you as well. Uh, it's very important that uh, when you have uh, vSAN configured and uh, you're using storage controllers that are uh, in the HCL. Uh, and we can see here that all the IO devices in general are supported and compatible with that particular um, ESXi version with firmware and drivers. But one of them that is used for vSAN shows something red. And when we dive into that, I see that the driver and firmware combination is not compatible with that specific um, uh, storage controller device type. Uh, and we always list also the combination of driver and firmwares that are compatible. So again, uh, the IO device itself might be compatible with your server, but if you decide to use it with vSAN, there's a separate vSAN HCL. And apparently, in this particular case, the driver and firmware combination is not compatible. So you can choose whether to change the driver or change the firmware. And the another cool thing I wanted to show you is that this is the current situation that you see with your environment, uh, how compatible it is. But you can simulate upgrades and see every each one of those elements, whether they'll be fully compatible or not, if you decide to go and do the upgrade to that specific version. It takes less than a minute to do all the calculations and to get the final report. Uh, which you can view in the interface, or you can export it in a CSV if you want to operate with it later on. And the last thing I wanted to show you as part of version 3 before we move on to BSI 
is uh, that we started to introduce the possibility for you to customize the parameters of some of those checks. So if we take a look at the PCI DSS uh, compliance report and we filter by customizable checks, I'll get uh, uh, a list of checks that I can add custom values to. What this means is, let's take a look at this one, for example, which checks whether you have NTP configured. Uh, however, maybe in my uh, specific organization, I want NTP to be configured on, for a specific uh, value, specific NTP server on one cluster and maybe a, a different value for another cluster. And you can now achieve that by adding custom values and scoping them to a specific cluster, data center, or vCenter. Uh, so in this case, you can really customize many of those checks uh, to monitor specific things in your configuration for your specific environment. So you can do that with password policies, uh, remote syslog configuration, um, lockout times, so uh, or inactivity timeouts. So basically many, many different uh, checks that you can customize. Uh, and these were the standards that we had prior to 3.1. So this is stick for federal agencies, PCI DSS for financial institutions and HIPAA for healthcare, as well as the automation of the VMR security hardening guidelines. And the new thing that we introduced with version 3.1 is the compliance uh, analysis with VSI. Um, so at this moment, uh, let me... Um, give the word to Robert, who will talk about what actually is BSI. Many of, all new, uh, many of you on the call know it, but uh, before we dive into the demo, uh, we will talk a little bit about BSI. Mm -hmm. um, okay, uh, so hello once more. Um, I'm Robert um, and I will talk um, about uh, BSI for you. I will um, shortly explain um, what it is um, and for, uh, who it applies to um, and uh, what to watch out for. So in general, BSI is the uh, German National Cyber Security Authority um, and uh, for, um, yeah, uh, and, and uh, basically um, they, they released uh, the uh, one method, um, uh, methodology um, for uh, IT Grundschutz, VSI IT Grundschutz, um, and which basically um, helps to um, helps organization to identify and to implement um, their IT security measures. Um, the BSI IT Grundschutz already existed uh, for um, some longer time. Um, but uh, it was only in the last two years um, that uh, it, it became more uh, more important and more streamlined. So um, the the IT Grundschutz was streamlined and simplified a lot, and uh, <clears throat> especially uh, new things uh, um, new things were added, um, especially. Uh, virtualization and uh, networking, and uh, this is this is the area which uh, Runecast basically um, is covering now. So now, what's really important um, with this mandatory for so VSI IT Grundschutz is is mandatory for federal, state, and also communal services. Um, yeah, so. That's basically it. Um, then there's there's a second there's a second thing with um, the uh, uh, critics. Um, I don't know. Probably uh, some of you have heard already about critics. Um, critics is uh, a mandatory audit process um, developed by the BSI especially for organizations that have uh, critical infrastructures. Um, this applies especially to um, energy uh, suppliers, water suppliers, traffic, transportation, um, but also healthcare, that means hospitals, finance, insurance. Um, important here to say is that there, there is there's a rule by the BSI or for, for the critics 
that uh, Critis only applies um, when for, for those critical infrastructures when there's more than 500,000 uh, um, people endangered through some potential attack that can be um, carried out on, on such um, organization. So that, for example, um, if there's an attack to an energy uh, provider to electricity works, the uh, like a terroristic attack, there's, there's definitely reason enough to, to have a protection and that's, that's done by critics. Um, those, those companies or those, those organizations um, in Germany are one fourth um, or four, four fifths actually of the organizations in Germany that, that um, falling under, under this are in uh, private hands or are in, in private ownership. That means it's it's especially important that uh, these sort of credit uh, credit uh, audits are carried out. Um, what's now even more important is that it's also mandatory for any sort of service providers that work with such organization that have critical infrastructures. Um, important to mention here is anything. Any, any service provi uh, providers who provide uh, uh, cloud storage service, software as a service, any sort of web content uh, or e-commerce for such organization with critical infrastructure. So um, more, more and more uh, companies fall under this um, field or un under this in this group. I think there was a study um, in, in 2017, it was already 2000, 2000 uh, organizations in Germany just for the, for the first three points, um, not even counting, not, of course, not counting the service providers. So those service providers are far more. Um, uh, Robert, uh, sorry to interrupt. Okay. Thank you. So I was just thinking uh, that maybe we could start to one of the polls uh, just to um, it's in German, but I think what it means is if you're affected by the Critis audit. So I'm going to launch it now. It will be great. I, I, I think everybody's a German speaker except for me on, on the call. So I, I hope you'll be able to understand. But uh, basically, please just uh, respond uh, yes or no uh, if you are affected or your customers or partners are affected by critics audits or not. Okay. All right, let's give it a few more seconds. So I see most of you already voted and let's uh, give it uh, another 15 seconds. So again, the question is yeah, whether either your organization or if your partner or distributor, your partners or customers affected by uh, critics or will have to undergo critics audits. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. So uh, about 50% of you uh, uh, responded yes and 50 no. So yeah, here we're, we're looking at uh, anywhere where IT groom shoots will be helpful. So. Uh, we, we covered uh, the government organizations and public now this uh, critical infrastructure organizations. Um, so I'll, uh, Robert, you can continue maybe with the next. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So ISO, ISO uh, uh, 27001 certification, um, I think that's also something that probably for most of you will be important, definitely for those who um, are uh, affected by the critics audits. Um, for, um, and, and basic, but, but certifications are also done by, um, or can also be done by other organizations, especially um, when, how I explained on the last slide, if, it, if, if you fall under any um, IT um, service provider that, uh, that, that, works, that works for Critis, 
uh, companies. Um, so the certification uh, generally can be done on basis of IT Grundschutz um, because these, these two um, are very closely connected together. Um, IT Grundschutz have, has been developed um, um, very strongly with, with the ISO uh, 27001 in mind. That means that um, a certification can be um, much simplified and much um, improved uh, and be more effective, uh, cost effective when you already comply with IT Grundschutz. Of course, it is always possible to um, um, have your own methodology um, implemented in your, uh, in your company structure, but um, as most auditors, um, BSI auditors, uh, Critis audit, uh, auditors work together uh, very closely with the BSI, they are of course already uh, very familiar to IT Grundschutz, so for them, it would be very easy once they see you are compliant with it to um, go through the certification with you. The BSI also provides um, something they call test TESTART, um, basically tests which can only be given out by BSI auditors. Um, and this is, this is something that that can be that can be much simplified um, through through a compliance with IT Grundschutz as well. So Roomcast cooperates very closely with auditors uh, with the BSI uh, for BSI um, and for IT Grundschutz, and that helps us to to really understand um, how these audits um, are carried out, what what is important what to look out for and, and how they're usually modeled. Uh, that's, that's how we can prepare an auditor to um, basically see whether your uh, virtual infrastructure is compliant with, uh, with IT Grundschutz. Yeah, and basically now, let me show you directly in the demo um, how that how that works and, and how you can use Runecast to automate your IT Grundschutz compliance. So that's that's basically where where Stan um, um, ended, and that's exactly where I will start. So we were in the security hardening. There we have already the, the known standards that uh, Runecast uh, su supports already for uh, a while. And uh, when you update your Runecast uh, appliance, then uh, first you, you will not see VSIT Grundschutz. That's simply um, because you first need to activate it. That is possible. Um, from this version on 3.1.0. So you basically go to security compliance. You will find the new description here for, uh, it, it is in German because it's uh, widely for uh, the German market. So you just click it, update. And you will be able um, to see the new standard here. So any, any anal analysis that you will run from now on uh, will carry out all the BSI IT Grundschutz compliance standards that we implemented or checks. Um, okay, so let me walk you through the UI real quick. Basically, this works very much um, as um, the, the other security standards. Is, I, I don't know if, um, how much you are familiar with the rules and the requirements in the, in the, or the structure of the IT Grundschutz, but basically it's built up in building blocks or Bausteine. Uh, and these, uh, these building blocks um, that, that we have to cover for virtual infrastructures 
um, are mainly from the field SIS15. So as you can already see um, on the filters, we are able to filter by um, different, different criteria. And the building blocks here is probably one of the most important because you can exactly see which issues are uh, grouped under which building blocks. So let me let me show you an example. If we take uh, building block A5, which is part of the basic um, basic uh, compliance for IT Gone shoots, you will see immediately that even there's uh, just one building block A5, we actually have to comply with um, multiple or with, with a lot of um, controls or with a lot of checks. So all these checks are necessary in order to uh, fulfill uh, that building block. So let's pick one. So if you if you open that, this is an, a pretty easy one. So we as as one part of the um, as one part of the um, check, we have to make sure that the ESXi host firewall is enabled. So if you open the details, uh, first of all, you will see the technical description um, of that check. And uh, this is exactly what will be uh, carried out for that one check for um, A5. Also, when you want to reference it to the German um, original requirement, um, you go to the BSI detail and you will be able to see the exact uh, description that uh, the BSI put there. So obviously, um, these these sentences uh, contain a lot of a lot of things to comply with. That's why we need all these checks. Also, there's a reference, um, so you will from here directly get to this building block one five, and you will be able to see where exactly in the structure. Your, your your check or your rule is. So if we quickly check the finding, then you see that, um, that you see the affected object basically, you see the host firewall status and you can see clearly that it's disabled and that's exactly the problem and that's exactly why this check failed because based on Sys15A5, it needs to be enabled. So now we can do two things. We can either go into the configuration and change the, uh, change the setting, which I won't do. Um, the other way is if you, for example, decide that you uh, don't want to check for this uh, check and you, you will then provide some way how to do it in a different way, then the easiest way is to ignore it and it will be shown as uh, passed or as configured later. So some of you might already know the ignore or the filter feature, but uh, maybe that's a good uh, way to um, show for those who don't. So basically when you uh, click ignore, you uh, just select the affected object. Let's put their simple filter name, something like um, firewall pass. So then we would apply a filter and uh, you would see immediately that this issue will be marked as passed so you can, you, that, that's a way how to um, refine your refine your check uh, process. Um, of course, the filtering is, is much more complex than that. It's not only about um, ignoring uh, uh, single issues uh, for a certain set of options, but you can actually um, define the filters based on 
much more complex criteria. Um, I will not go fully through it, but uh, just to quickly show you, um, the, the use case might be um, that, for example, just a part of your um, virtual environment needs to be compliant with BSI. This uh, can be the case. Um, so you will, you will be able to exactly say for which part you want to have BSI uh, enabled or disabled. So let's uh, quickly find it. Yeah, so, so here you see uh, the, the full filter, then you see the affected um, V centers, and, and here you can then, you have uh, the, basically uh, pretty much every power to, to, do, to do any filtering that you like based on any of the issues they are sorted. Here's BSI. If you want to include anything or exclude anything else in BSI, you have them sorted by critical, major, medium, and you will find all the issues that we saw there. Okay. So if there are more questions, we can certainly get to it in the in the um, uh, Q and A section at the end. Yeah. Um, so may, maybe one more thing. Um, I think for those who are not familiar with Runecast, um, of course, you are able to automatically uh, schedule. You can set up a schedule for your um, for your analysis, and uh, that's that's very important if you want to ensure um, if you want to ensure compliance with BSI all the time. But definitely, as it is common for Kalitis audits and also BSI audits um, to be every two years uh, to, to be repeated, basically, you definitely need to make sure before the, before the audit and you can, prepare, um, you can prepare all the documents and uh, the, uh, ensure the compliance with BC, uh, BSI uh, before the auditor. Um, or even before a certification. Yeah, um, I think that um, mostly covers it. If there's anything else, we can probably handle it in the Q and A. Uh, um, I wanted to show something actually yeah. because I, I just remember that something that can be also useful when you are uh, doing your ongoing uh, auditing and also preparation for an audit. Uh, the filtering functionality is definitely useful because it lets you uh, filter out in a very granular way certain checks from certain parts of your infrastructure. But the additional thing what some of our customers are using is the annotation feature. Uh, basically what you can achieve here is uh, you don't want to completely hide a specific check or, or ignore it for a certain number of objects but you want to add uh, just maybe a note or justification. Why is this currently an open issue? Maybe you, there's a good reason for it, uh, or maybe you uh, have it covered in, in some way. So, um, or, or maybe there's a change coming in like a month uh, that will uh, change those settings. So uh, you can, for example, add a note here, and this will always show in the interface, but also when you're exporting this in a, in a CSV or PDF, there will be a column that is also showing the notes. So if you have to send to an auditor or to the security team or anybody a report with the current open issues against IT Grundschutz, uh, then uh, they'll be able to see also these useful notes that you've added. Of course, you can add notes both for the open issues or also for those that are uh, configured or passed, you can also add, for example, uh, yeah, additional note, for example, some evidence or something like that. All right, uh, so this is one of the things I wanted to show you. And uh, the other thing is to remind you that historical data for all the configuration scans is being kept, including for BSI. And if we go to the all issues view and switch to the just BSI, so I just want to see the BSI related issues. Uh, then the graph will show me uh, only the particular objects or issues for uh, uh, any configuration scan that I've performed in the past. 
Yeah, so if I click on any of these uh, uh, data points, then the table underneath will be updated with the issues detected at that specific time. And I can also compare to the previous result, to the previous scan. So here it's really useful to see what kind of new issues appeared and what issues were maybe resolved between the scans. All right, so these are the last two things that uh, I just wanted to show you that can be really useful for uh, your uh, usage of the automation for BSI to Grundschutz. And I believe now we can open it for questions. So either, I believe you can either unmute yourself or just put uh, your question in the Q&A box. Uh, you can also phrase it in German, that's fine. Uh, so either in German, in English, uh, you can add your question. So in the meantime, these are also our Twitter accounts, if you'd like to follow us on Twitter. Uh, and uh, I will just keep the uh, session open for another couple of minutes just to see uh, if anybody has any questions. Another way to ask your questions after the webinar is just to uh, send them to innovate. Uh, at runcast.com and uh, we'll make sure to answer them. Yeah. And just to remind everyone, especially those that have not tried Runcast Analyzer, you can try it for free. If you just go to our website, runcast.com, register for free and download the one gig OVA. So it would not take much of uh, uh, your time of the day. Uh, you just download, import it into your infrastructure and you can try it for 14 days with some limited functionality, but it will give you a really uh, good idea and good taste of uh, the feature set. Um, Ralph has a question. Uh, thanks for that. Is it possible to filter on a note? Uh, for example, RFC 4711. So Ralph, I, I suppose that uh, what you mean is if you add an annotation, so this last feature that I, I showed, um yeah okay great um filtering on a, that, that's a really good question because nobody actually asked this before um i uh the 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 sure way to do it is uh if you do an export in a pdf or csv then the notes will be there the annotations will be there and that's how you can filter but in the in the search box here the note will not be included let me just double check yeah Okay, but um, uh, Ralph, I suppose that you would consider this uh, useful, right? Uh, I mean, we uh, that, that's a really good point because if you're using the notes extensively, uh, then you might want to filter on them directly in the interface. Uh, correct, great. Yeah, uh, uh, thanks very much. We will take this as a note and also we have Robert here, he's a product owner, so he will note it down. So that's something that we can certainly easily implement. Until we do that, uh, yeah, you can just uh, do an export in CSV or PDF and uh, you know filter on the notes there. Thanks for the question, Ralph. If any other questions come up, uh, again, uh, make sure to drop us an email at innovate at uh, or uh, follow us on Twitter. Uh, and uh, we will have this uh, webinar posted also, so if you, uh, we will send you the link shortly, uh, probably later this week, uh, and you can share it also with your peers, with your customers or colleagues. So thank you very much for joining. Uh, thanks, Robert, also for, yeah. for the presentation. Thank you. Um, and uh, hope you have a successful day and week. Thank you very much.